Goldfinches are a very recognizable feeder bird. Most amateur birders will know of these bright little fellows. They do raise something of an interesting question, though. One of the little-known facts about birds is that they're actually quite limited in the color pigments they're able to produce. Most birds can't actually produce anything but black and various earth tones. So that begs the question of where does this yellow come from? If you were to pluck a feather and drop it into a mass spectrometer, you'd find something surprising. You'd find that feather full of plant pigments, notably carotenoids, which is a family of plant pigments that lends itself to yellows and oranges. These plant pigments themselves come from the bird's diet, which in this case is mostly seeds, and occasionally they'll nibble on yellow flowers to get at those various pigments. Birds also can and will mix and match pigments for a whole range of different colors. Male goldfinches use dense areas of melanin for striking blacks, while females mix melanin in small amounts of carotenoids for a fainter, dirty yellow color, which in many ways is more complex than the male's garish display. A male rose-breasted grosbeak will pack melanin into many of its feathers in a similar way, but derive the characteristic red on his chest and under his wings from red berries he eats in the forest. And of course, nobody can forget the magnificent orange of an oriole, also produced from fruit and berry-derived carotenoids. But then we get to blue. Look at this mountain bluebird and the vibrant blue of her primary feathers. Pretty, right? Now, what if I told you there wasn't a speck of blue pigment in there? The blue pigment doesn't even really exist in nature. Where does all this come from, then? The answer is structural coloration, where the physical surface of the feather itself is turned into an extremely efficient reflector of blue light by microscopic structures that cover individual feather barbs. In order to work properly, those nanometer scale structures have to be able to same size at the wavelength of blue light. Let's let that sink in for a moment. A bluebird's feathers are made up of a nanoscale matrix which exclusively scatters blue light. It sounds like something out of Star Trek. Suffice to say, the diversity of colors birds are able to produce, using everything from pigment mixing to manipulating fundamental properties of light, is mind-boggling. Which really just makes them that much cooler. 